Hi, this is Ms. Park, and this is a video on ratios, rates, and proportions. So a lot of this uh, you have seen before in previous grades. If it doesn't look familiar, don't worry, because we're, we're going to learn it now. Um, so just uh, pay attention to the video and, and take some notes as we go um, in your booklet, and then hopefully everything will make some sense. So we're going to go to the booklet page that says rates, ratios, and proportions. And you can just follow along with me here as I fill in these, um, these pages. Uh, at any point in time, you are free to pause the video to catch up, or you can replay parts of it if you want to see it again. You can even speed it up if you feel it's going fast for, uh, too slow for you. Okay, so um, I'm going to start at the very beginning and just define some terms. So the first term we have is rate. So a rate is a comparison of two quantities with different units. So for example, 100 kilometers per hour. That's a comparison of kilometers to hours. So when we write 100 kilometers per hour, we are saying that in one hour, we can travel 100 kilometers. Okay, here's another uh, rate, $4.50 per 100 grams, uh, sorry, per 500 grams. So that is saying for every 500 grams, the cost is $4.50, all right? Now, if the second number is one, then the rate is called a unit rate. So if you look at the these two kilometers per hour, it's 100 kilometers for every one hour. So this is called a unit rate. But this one is $4.50 for 500 grams, not for one gram. So this is not a unit rate. Okay, so let's take some rates and convert them to unit rates. So the first one says $100 for five hours. So how, if it's $100 for every five hours, how much is it going to be for one hour? All right, we're going to write a unit rate. Okay, so the word unit actually means one, like you think about a, a unicycle. Okay, so this is a unit rate is per one. So if I have $100 for five hours, then if I want to know for one hour, then I can just take both numbers and divide them by five. And so then I get $20 for, per hour. And notice I don't even need to write one hour because it's $20 per hour. That's clear that that's for one hour. 60 beats in two minutes. So I can take this ratio and, uh, sorry, this rate and divide it by two. So I'm right over here, divide by two. So if I can do 60 beats in two minutes, it means I can do 80 beats in one minute. So I'm going to go like this, 80 beats per minute. Okay, and we use this slash to say per. So 80 beats per minute. $6 per three kilograms. I can divide both of these numbers by three and I get $2 per kilogram. Okay, we use the slash to say per. So hopefully that's okay. The next thing, the next word is ratio. So a ratio, um, comparison of two or more quantities with the same unit. So notice over here, dollars and hours, beats and minutes, dollars and kilograms. But if you have the same unit, so for example, we're going to do a, an example with fruit. It's all fruit. Um, and the fruit uh, basket contains eight lemons, four apples, and three bananas. They're all fruit then the ratio of apples to bananas is four to three. For every four apples in the basket, there's three bananas. And we read this four, two, three. This is called the ratio. And it's read like this, four, two, three. Okay, and the, the common unit is pieces of fruit. So you can see that the ratio of lemons to apples is eight to four. The ratio of lemons to bananas is eight to three. And here it says you can do a three-part ratio. You can say the ratio of lemons to bananas to apples. So let's read lemons to then bananas to then apples is eight to three to four, right? And the order matters because we said it was going to be lemons first, then bananas, and then apples. So it has to be the lemon number first, then the bananas, then the apples. Okay. And here it's telling you that the order is important. Four to three is not the same as three to four, right? Because each the placement of these numbers has meaning. Ratios are most often written in colon form, as shown above, and read as four, two, three. So this is your colon over here. 
ratios can also be written in fractional form. So you could write 4 to 3 as 4 over 3. And, and you'll see that sometimes in, in the practice, you'll see it too. Okay, now, just like fractions, ratios can be expressed in lowest terms. So write each ratio in lowest terms. So remember, we can write it as a ratio like this when it's the same unit, right? I'm just gonna put over here, same unit. Okay, so 15 minutes to five minutes, right? That kind of thing. So when we have this, we can also reduce it. So um, I can reduce both of these numbers by dividing both of them by five. That's gonna be an equivalent ratio because for every 15 on this side, there's five on this side. So if I can reduce that, divide by five, then I can say that for every three on the left, there's one on the right. So 15 to five can be reduced to three to one. Okay, six minutes to 10 minutes, it's the same unit, so I can write six to 10. And 6 to 10, I can reduce, so I can divide by 2. Now, you don't always have to write the words divide by 2, but I'm doing it just because it's the lesson. You're going to find a number that divides into both of these with no remainder. So 2 is the largest number, and I can get 3 to 5. Right? For every 6, there's 10. Well, that's the same as for every 3, there's 5. Now, this one here, it's not the same unit, so I can't write 3 to 4. So let me go years to months, and I'll write the numbers underneath. That's three to four. If I, if I uh, express on top that, it's, that these are the units I'm working with, if I want to write it with the same units, if I want to write months to months, then I can convert three years to months. So one year has 12 months, so three years is 36 months. And now I have a ratio that's month to month, 36 to 4. And this can also be reduced. So what's a number that divides into 36 and divides into 4? So the largest such number is 4. So I can divide both numbers by 4. And I get, therefore, 9 to 1. Right? Therefore just means so, uh, in conclusion, that's what that means. So I'll, I'll be using therefore a lot, and it's just these three dots like that. Okay, so that's now we've talked about rates, we've talked about ratios, and we've talked about reducing to lowest terms. Okay, and we've talked about unit rates. I'm going to go to the next page and do a couple of uh, examples with you. So the next thing is called a proportion. And a proportion is just uh, a ratio, um, but you have two ratios involved. So a proportion is a comparison of two rates or two ratios. For example, Four pills a day is the same as eight pills for two days. Three to five is the same as nine to 15, because here we're just multiplying both of the numbers by five. So these are the same, right? So what happens with proportions, we have to solve proportions, which means they're gonna give you a ratio and then they're gonna give you another one that's equivalent. They're equivalent. It means you either, you, you have to, multiply the top and the bottom by the same number to get this, and same in the other direction. But one of the numbers is missing. So how do we get it? Well, let's look at what we have. I have a 100 here and I have a 50 here. So how do I get from 100 to 50? Well, I can divide this by two. But to make the uh, fractions equivalent, I gotta divide these by two. Okay, and if I do that, then I will have equivalent fractions. So I can say, since 50 is 100 divided by 2, then x is 60 divided by 2. And in grade 9, we write division uh, as, a, as a fraction. Okay, you won't see me use this division symbol very often. And 60 divided by 2 is 30. Okay, and you can finish that off with a therefore, because that's the conclusion x is equal to 30. Okay, let's see what's happening in the next one. 6 times what is 18? So 6 times 3 is 18. Okay, then that means I have to multiply the bottom by 3. So 30 times 3 is what? Well, 30 times 3 is 90. So x is equal to 30 times 3. 
and in grade 9 we're using brackets. We don't use multiplication signs because multiplication signs look like x and we're using x as, a, as variables. So fractions for division, brackets for multiplication. So x is 90 and that's my final answer so I'll throw a therefore in front. Okay, now this one here, you have to look at the, the first number, the first number, the second number, and the second number. Okay, I can see that the 7 is multiplied by 5 to get to 35, which means I'm going to have to multiply the 3 by 5 to get x. So x is equal to 3 times 5, so x is equal to 50. Okay. Or I could do this question by rewriting the ratio as a fraction. So I could say 3 over 7 equals x over 35, and then do the same thing as before. This is times 5, so this must also be times 5. All right, it's the same thing. Okay, word problem? Let's do it. Um, there's a little, little typo here. There are many applications of rates, ratios, not rations, and proportions. Here are just two. In a parking lot, the ratio of handicapped spots to regular spots must be at least 1 to 30. It means for every 30 regular spots, you must have at least one handicapped spot. If there are 80 regular spots, what is the minimum number of handicapped spots? Right. So if I go um, handicap to regular, I want a ratio of 1 to 30. But they're saying if there's 80 regular spots, then how many handicapped spots should there be? Okay. There's more than one way to do this problem. Okay. One way is to say, I start with 30, I need 80. What do I have to multiply by? But I have to multiply 30 by to get 80. So what you have to multiply 30 by is some number that's not a whole number. Um, if I want to know what that number is, I would go 80 divided by 30, 2.666. I would have to multiply 30 by 2.666 to get 80. But because this is not, this is a repeating decimal, um, it, if we write 2.6 or 2.7 or 2.667 or whatever, we are going to be chopping this number. And so we're going to lose accuracy. So we never work with these long decimals. We try to keep everything in fractions um, so that uh, everything is accurate. So we must multiply this by the fraction 80 over 30. Okay? If I multiply 30 by 80 over 30, the 30s cancel out, and I'm left with just the 80. But then that means I must multiply this 1 by 80 over 30. So x is going to equal to 1 times 80 over 30. So x, therefore x, is equal to 80 over 30. And because it's a word problem, we must end this with a sentence that answers the question. Therefore, there should be... Now, 80 over 30 is 2.66. We can't make 2.66 parking spots. That doesn't make any sense. If I put two parking spots, that's not enough. So I'm going to have to have three parking spots. So over here, there should be three parking spots. And notice, yes, I am rounding this. So I'm going to say this is approximately three because I'm rounding it. And I'm rounding it, but I can never round it up here. I can only round it at the very, very end when I need to answer the question. Then I have to interpret this number. I have to make sense of this number. That's the only time I can round, okay, just at the end. Another method to solve a proportion looks like this. Write these as fractions. So 1 over 30 equals x over 80. Okay, And this method, is, I don't love it, um, but you may have learned this last year. So this method is the cross-multiply method. But if you use this method, I'm going to challenge you to explain it to me, all right? Because we don't want to, in math, we don't want to just follow steps without understanding why they work, okay? Um, what we do is, because these two are the same, um, 
they're, they're fractions and they're equal. We can cross multiply. Okay, this makes me really nervous telling you this. But you'll see that what's going to happen is the same as over here. Okay, 30 times x, I'm going to write 30x, is equal to 1 times 80. And so then 30x is equal to 80. So if 30x is equals 80, then 1x is 80 divided by 30, right? You're dividing both sides by 30. So that's your other method. I'm going to put this cloud around it, and I'm going to write, um, you know, be prepared to explain why this works. So I'll leave that with you. Okay, if you're using that method, you need to understand why this method works. I'm going to show you this method, and I want you to think about it and think about why it works. Why does it give you the same answer as here? I'm going to leave you with that. Okay, but this method here always works, right? Because it's, it's straight equivalent uh, ratios. And our last example, at Walmart, Pencils come in two size packs, 24 pencils for $2.27 or 12 pencils for $1.25. Which is the better buy? So better buy means it's going to be cheaper. All right, so let's set up our ratios. So I got pencils to cost to dollars, okay? Pencils to dollars, right? I can get 24 pencils for $2.27. Or I can get 12 pencils for $1.25. Okay? Lots and lots of ways to do this question. Right? We don't have to use necessarily complicated uh, you know, fractions unless we want to. But I can see here that 12 pencils could cost me $1.25. If I wanted 24 pencils, I would have to multiply this by 2. And I would have to multiply this by 2. So with the 12 packs, it would cost 2 times $1.25, which is two fifty, dollars for 24 pencils. Therefore, so if I, if I bought it this way, I'd be buying two packs, right? And, and that would cost me two fifty. dollars the 24 pack is cheaper. Therefore, the 24 pack is cheaper. Okay. On the other side of the of this page, you've got some practice problems. All right. Um, there's some uh, some proportions to solve, and you can solve them whichever way you want. Remember method, the first method or the second method. Then you have all these word problems. Okay. And be very careful when you're doing word problems with units. For example. If a question says 98 cents, um, you could work in cents and then you write the number 98, or you might choose to work in dollars and write the number as 0 0.98. Okay, so be careful with units. Some of these questions you might have to convert. I see another one where the question has liters and milliliters. So choose your unit. It even tells you one liter is 1,000 milliliters. Whatever unit you choose, you'll use that unit for the whole question. Okay, so practice the answers are at the bottom of the sheet and please work together, okay, um, help each other and thank you for watching.